What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Of course, my name is Gareth from Park Cameras, as it always is. And today, we're checking out this. It's the Nikon Z6 II Movie Kit. It's an interesting looking box. And it's essentially a whole kit for videographers centered around the Z6 II. Now we've done a review on that camera for video and for stills. I actually think that's such a nice camera. I think it's so understated in terms of, I don't think people talk about it enough as an option for video. I think there's a lot to talk about, a lot of cameras, and I think the Z6 II deserves to be up there, especially with some of the firmware updates that you can get in addition to stuff. And some of them are paid updates, sure, sure. But they offer some really interesting stuff. And this, just like they did with the Z6, is a whole videographer's kit centered around the Z6 II. So we're gonna, we're gonna open it up, we're gonna see what you get inside, we're gonna talk about all of it, and we're gonna go shoot with it as well and get some fun content. So let's just open it up. I've not done a video like this, to be honest, for ages. Oh my God, I can't open the box. It's because to be fair, I am sitting the wrong way round to open the box, but that's because I want it to face you, you know? So the things I do. Nice kind of looking box, nice packaging. There's some lists here of different lenses and, and things that you can get for the camera, which is great. And then there's a list here to show you exactly what you get in the box. So of course, we've got the Z6 II actual camera. Now we've done a full review on that. Like I say, I'll pop a link to that review down in the comments so you can go find that nice and easy. I really like this camera. That's gonna have a battery in it as well, which is important to note because I immediately see there is a second battery as well. Brilliant. There's a second battery as well, which I think is great because, you know, if you wanted to use this in a professional sense, if you want to use this for commercial stuff or run a gun and stuff like that, you definitely will want a second battery for your kit. Absolutely. Of course, we've also got the Atomos Ninja 5, which I'm very excited to use as a screen for external recording and things like that with the Z6 II. And of course, with those upgrades that you can get, you can do raw video from the Z6 II. So this is gonna be fantastic. And just generally speaking as well, there's two big advantages I think to having a, having a screen like this on top of your camera. The first one is that it does make it easier. These, these are fantastic. And it does make it easier to see what you're doing to you know, keep track of things. You know, There's all kinds of things that you can pop on the screen, LUTs and, and waveforms and all kinds of stuff so you can see exactly what you're doing. The second thing, which I don't think is talked about enough, but I think this is actually really important. It looks good. And I know you're thinking, what? But it it looks like you know what you're doing and like it's more of a professional setup, which is important for some clients. Some clients don't want you to turn up with a camera that it looks like they could own and just have. Some clients want it to look the part when you're doing it, it gives them uh, you know, a little bit of a an ease of mind over what's going on. They they just feel init they just feel like they can trust that everything's going well. You're a professional. You obviously know what you're doing because this is a whole setup, and I think that's important. There are some cameras and some setups that just put the client at ease more than others, and I've experienced that. I've experienced that firsthand a bunch of times. So I think that's that's one thing that doesn't get talked about enough with an external recording screen like that. I think it's it's an important thing, especially if you're doing client work, you know, for small businesses and stuff like that. Otherwise, we have got a lot of other stuff to look at in this box. Of course, we have the FTZ adapter, fantastic. That means if you already have some Nikon lenses, no worries. Even if you don't know, just massively expands the range of lenses that you could use with this setup as well. We've also got the Atomos Power Kit, which includes two batteries, charger, you know, stuff like that. So you're gonna be absolutely fine with actually using that along with the camera. You wouldn't wanna, you wouldn't wanna have two camera batteries and not two batteries for your screen. That would be, that'd be real silly. And then we've got some small rig parts, which make up a half cage by the looks of it. We've got a half cage, we've got a top handle, nice, always appreciate that. And we've got a magic arm with an adapter. So all of that is gonna allow us ultimately to have the screen on the top by the looks of it, and just have a very comfortable kind of setup for actually filming. So I really appreciate that. That comes in three packages just like this. Now, let's hand over to me, to me, but let's hand over to me once this is all set up, because you don't wanna watch me doing that. That's gonna be a whole thing. You don't wanna watch me doing that. So let's just hand straight over to me once this is all set up. Let's do some cool little B-roll of the setup, and then let's go out and film some stuff. Let's talk about some stuff. Let's get into it. Do the B-roll of the cool stuff, and then me talking about the thing once it's done. <laughs> So 
So I've got everything set up now. So I've got the actual camera in the half cage, which is actually really nice. And we'll talk about that in a second. The handle on top of that. We've got the magic arm. And then of course, we've got the Ninja 5 at the very top. Now the magic arm allows me to move that around. I can actually move the Ninja 5 into different positions, which is super handy. And then of course, things like the handle and the half cage give me so much flexibility about how I set everything up. And that's what I love about this kind of setup. You know, in terms of actually holding it, yes, it's relatively big now. And yes, it's not the lightest setup in the world, but then it was never intended to be, right? And I actually quite like the weight. It's not super heavy, it's not unbelievably heavy, but it does add a little bit of bulk to things which actually can work in your favor. You know, you can hold it by the actual grip of the camera. You've got the handle as well, which you can use to move it around as well. And that weight, like I say, works a little bit in your favor because you can actually get some kind of stabilization from the weight of it. You know, when you move around a slightly heavier setup, you do get a certain smoothness to the shots. It doesn't have the handshake that you get, especially with a much lighter system. Now, of course, I have used small rig for ages. I love small rig, and that's what the half cage, the handle, and the magic arm are. And the reason I think it's so good is it's very expandable, or you can bring it down. You know, if we didn't want to have the handle on there, we could just take that out, have the magic arm straight onto the half cage. Super handy. We could actually, if we really wanted to, we could have the Ninja 5 straight onto the half cage. We could use a little adapter, so we've still got the ability to move it around. Super, super easy, super versatile, and super flexible for how you want it to be. We could also add things on there. We've got loads of mounts on the handle, on the half cage. If you want to put some hot shoes on there, whatever you like, it's going to be super easy to expand it and to bring it down as well. So what would this be like to actually film with? Well, I actually think this would be really, really nice. I was out, you know, out and about with this and it was great. But actually, if you were doing client work with it, I think this would be fantastic. Like I say, that slight bit of extra weight Kind of works in your favor, I think. And I think you're gonna be able to get some really nice shots with this, with the Atomos Ninja 5. It's such a, an easy thing to use, to set up, to be able to see what you're doing, but also it adds so much to what you can actually get out of this camera and then get out of your editing as well. When you get into post-production, you're gonna be very thankful for all the extra information that you'll be able to gather with the Atomos Ninja 5 as well. Of course, you can do raw video. If you get the paid upgrade on the Z6 II, you can get raw video out of it now as well, which is a huge and very exciting. I also think it's worth mentioning again, I mentioned it earlier, but I think it's worth mentioning again, how good and professional this setup looks, not only to use, but how it looks to the client. So if you are primarily doing client work, you turn up with this, they're absolutely gonna feel like they've got their money's worth because they've got a videographer who clearly knows what they're doing, clearly has the right setup, which is fantastic, especially if you work with small businesses. You know, it's a small thing. It might not be something for you to consider, but I think it's worth being aware of at least. Now, one thing I did notice is not part of this whole kit is the audio side of things. So I would probably have expected maybe a shotgun mic, probably a Rode shotgun mic, you know, a relatively basic one, but something on there that you'd pop on the camera. Now, I think there's a few reasons it's not in there. You know, I've been giving a lot of thought to it. And actually, I realized that even if it was in there, that I would never use it. Not just in terms of reviewing this. If I was reviewing it, I probably would use it. But, you know, if I bought this kit, I would never use the shotgun mic. And that's because I'm never in a situation where a shotgun microphone is the right choice for the audio that I need to capture. I'm never really capturing audio at the same time as video when I'm doing a promo video. Right, I'll add in sound effects and music and stuff later. I'm not gonna use a shotgun mic for this kind of shot. You know, the camera's quite far away. I'm, I'm shooting about 70 millimeters. So the camera's quite far away from me right now. I'm using a boom mic. And I much prefer using a boom mic because I can plug it into an audio recorder. I can have it all the way over here. I can really control things. And generally speaking, it's just much better audio quality as well. And if I'm not using that, I'll use a lav mic actually attached to me somewhere, which again, is not a shotgun mic. So realistically, I don't think it's a big loss. And I think the fact that I've just talked about three different microphones there, shotgun mic, a boom mic, and a lav mic, all different scenarios, it means Nikon would have had to choose one of those to pop in the box. Now you could definitely make an argument there should be a lav mic in there, right? I could totally understand there should be a lav mic in the box or there should be a boom mic or something. Even if it's just a shotgun mic, just so you have something for audio, I totally understand. But Personally, I don't think it's gonna be missed that much. I think what Nikon have gone for is they set up 
a really, really good setup for video. You're gonna be able to capture great stuff, professional, client work, all kinds of stuff. And then for whatever audio you need, if it's interview, if it's headshot, a talking head like this, you can get whatever microphone suits you best. And that's a separate setup. So this is entirely just for the video. And I think that kind of makes sense because like I say, everyone's audio needs are gonna be different. You could have this set up for interviews and you might want a lav mic, you might want a boom mic. You could have this set up for client work and maybe you do want a shotgun mic. There's all kinds of different stuff out there. And so I think that's probably why the microphone is not in there. Something else I noticed is not in the kit and this is probably a little bit more, you know, obvious. There's no lens in there. So you've just got the camera and all that kind of stuff. So you do need to buy a lens with the kit. Now I'm using the 24 to 70 f 2.8, which is a lovely, lovely lens, especially for video as well. And you can get some really cinematic shots on that. But also the F4 version is really, really good. And F4 for video, I think, is actually fantastic. It's a great sweet spot for, it's a bit more forgiving than f 2.8 in terms of depth of field. And it also looks good. You can still get some really cinematic stuff, you know, especially if you zoom in and get a bit of compression. But it, it just it just works very well, I think, for video. And it's it's a bit more controllable. It's not the most cinematic lens out there. It's not the most cinematic lens in the world, but I think it really does a good job for the kind of stuff that you might want to get from it. And like I say, it's a bit more forgiving as well with that depth of field. I love the kits that Nikon do like this. They did it for the Z6, they're doing it for the Z6 II. I think it's such a good idea. I'm so surprised it's not copied more by other brands. You know, because this is such a good idea to have this available for any budding videographer who thinks, okay, I need to get a camera, I need to get a whole setup, I wanna get into videography, I've been doing it with whatever, and I need to get something a bit more serious because I wanna do professional work, I wanna do professional work. There you go, everything you're gonna need. It's quite well future-proofed as well, it's gonna last you a long time. The Ninja 5 as well, you know, the Z6 II, raw video, you know, you've got some serious professional specs in there. It's just such a good idea. Yeah, you have to get a lens, but I think it's the same situation as the microphone. You know, what lens is the one for you? 24 to 70? Great all-rounder. Do you want a prime? Are you primarily doing interview shots? If your whole thing is you're shooting interviews, that's gonna inform your lens choice. Whereas if you're doing promo videos, it might be slightly different. You know, but if you're doing sports or music videos, again, it might be slightly different. So I think that's probably why there's no lens in there because it doesn't force you down one particular path. I think Nikon have left it pretty open. You know, you've got the camera, you've got the, the external recorder, and then you've got some nice setup there which you can expand on if you want to as well. But the audio and the lens, that choice is up to you. That's something you can decide based on what you're going to be using this for. Now there's a link down in the description so you can check out the full kit, everything you might wanna know about it. I think it's awesome. I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments as well. So let me know down there what you think about this kit. Do you mind there's no mic? Do you mind there's no lens? Does it make sense to you what I thought? Or do you think I'm kind of trying to justify things a bit too much? And maybe, maybe I need to calm myself down. Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think. Of course, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. The thumbs up in particular, ooh, that really helps me out. I will of course see you in the next video. And as always, thanks for watching.